a star the size of our sun can shine for about 10 billion years. Specifically, our lovely sun is about 4.5 billion years old and has already burned half its fuel. The next stage in a star's life comes when it runs out of juice. Internal pressure drops, but gravity continues to press. At some point, a star simply collapses under its own weight and shrinks to the size of its core at the speed of almost a quarter of the speed of light. In less than half a second, a huge star turns into a small and dense object. This rapid collapse creates incredible shock waves that cause the upper layers of the star to explode. Now, an incredible amount of energy and matter is thrown into outer space. At this moment, luminosity of the star increases millions or even billions of times. This is the flash that our scientists can see with super powerful telescopes. But the light from this explosion doesn't reach our planet until many years later. So in fact, this star has long since faded. There are several options at this point. It all depends on the size of the star. If its mass is small, about the mass of our sun, then for several months, this flash will become brighter and brighter until it reaches its peak. Then, the energy of the explosion will begin to dissipate, gradually fading and cooling down. A few years will pass, and the temperature of the former star will match that of space, and it will simply cease to exist. But the heavier the star, the more interesting the events will be. Heavy stars burn their fuel too quickly and have a much shorter lifespan. Stars weighing about eight masses of the sun can collapse into a rather unusual object, which is rarely found in the universe, a neutron star. This dull ball is only six to 12 miles wide and covered with a hard metal crust about half a mile thick. Neutron stars can weigh about two suns and have a strong gravity force. If you feel comfortable and in good shape on Earth, you wouldn't even be able to lift a needle or a match here. What's more, you would be pressed to the surface like a pancake and just unable to move. But there are stars dozens of times heavier than the sun. An explosion of such a supernova, which weighs at least 40 times more than the sun, gives birth to the most inexplicable and mysterious object in the universe, a black hole. At first, an incredibly bright explosion occurs. A shockwave spreads, carrying dust and matter of the former star around like a fog. And at the place of the explosion, only a small black disk is left. This black abyss is the heaviest object in the universe. It's so heavy that its gravity curves space-time around it. Yes, the closer you are to a black hole, the slower time will go for you. If you could get close enough to one of them, spend a couple of minutes in its orbit, and return to Earth, you would simply not recognize your home. One minute near a black hole can be a month, a year, or a decade on Earth. This depends on how heavy the black hole is. But don't get too close. The force of its gravity is so strong that even light can't escape from it. Humanity also knows about the existence of supermassive black holes. They gradually build up their mass, feeding on different cosmic objects just like a predator. Usually, such supermassive black holes lie in the centers of galaxies, and their gravity is so strong they can hold countless stars near them. Most people imagine a black hole to be a starving monster with a gravitational pull so strong that nothing, including light, can escape it. As soon as something reaches the event horizon, aka the point of no return, there's no way back. But then, how about information? Quantum physics, which describes how everything in the world works, claims that nothing can destroy data. But if this nothing includes black holes, well, then we have a paradox on our hands. That's when Stephen Hawking came up with a new idea. Can it be that black holes don't have event horizons? Instead, they may have apparent horizons. 
those can only trap stuff for some time. After that, matter or energy will escape, but in a different form. It means that black holes won't be able to wipe information, just change it. If this theory is true and there's no event horizon, then there are no black holes as we know them. Is there going to be a big crunch, a big rip, or a big freeze? Yeah, I know where you can get a big gulp. Many astronomers agree that the universe might end some 2.8 to 22 billion years from now. If the universe is expanding, and it is, it means it was born from a much more compact state, like Rhode Island. And if it does have a beginning, it's likely to come to an end, too. But scientists can agree on the way it'll happen. One of the most popular theories is a big crunch. Not Captain Crunch. Once the growth of the universe slows down to a crawl, the gravity will become the main force. It'll make the universe shrink, causing planets, stars, and galaxies to collide with one another. It'll be the Big Bang in reverse, with everything collapsing in on itself. A trip to the nearest star apart from the Sun would take you 5 million years on a commercial airplane. That's what I call a long-haul flight. It would take you about 100,000 years to travel from one end of our Milky Way galaxy to the other at the speed of light. On a plane, that's just too many zeros to fit into a single screen. The Sun can fit about a million Earths inside it. But there's a star called UY Scuti that's about 1,700 times larger than the Sun. Almost everything in space is connected with everything else by gravity. Star systems are part of galaxies, galaxies are part of clusters, and clusters are parts of superclusters. The largest known supercluster in the universe is the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. That's a name. It's more than 10 billion light years wide. Mars has the largest natural formations in the solar system. The mountain three times taller than Everest, the canyon almost seven times longer than the Grand Canyon, and the crater that could fit half the Amazon River across it. Although the Big Bang Theory is the most viable one, researchers still find evidence against it. For example, one theory suggests there's an axis around which the whole universe rotates. It's aptly named the Axis of Evil. There's a supermassive black hole at the center of almost every major galaxy, including ours. Black holes can attract not only stars and planets, but also other black holes, eventually merging and becoming one with a much greater mass. The spinning movement and enormous gravity of black holes sometimes makes it throw jets of matter into space, traveling at almost the speed of light. There's a thing called the Great Attractor. It's a gravitational anomaly outside our galaxy that can't be seen but is known to attract the Milky Way and lots of other galaxies toward itself. The winds on Neptune reach the speeds of 1600 miles per hour. That's three times faster than a commercial airplane. Temperatures at the moon's south pole reach minus 397 degrees Fahrenheit, which just might be the coldest in the entire solar system. Saturn is less dense than water, so if it were thrown into a giant pool, it would float. Jupiter's moon Europa is covered in a thick layer of ice, but underneath it is a vast ocean of water, measuring up to 100 miles deep. Water ice was previously thought to be rare and only common for Earth, but it can, in fact, be found all over the solar system, even on Mercury and the moon. Saturn's magnificent rings are a belt of space debris that formed after one of its moons fell apart. Jupiter, Neptune, and Uranus also have rings, although not as splendidly as Saturn's. And even some asteroids have them too. There are eight confirmed planets in the solar system, but evidence shows there can be a ninth. We just haven't discovered it yet. Organic matter could have been brought to Earth by comets, since it has been found on several of them. Saturn also has a never-ending storm, just like Jupiter. But it's also peculiar for its shape. It has six distinct sides. 
Mercury and Venus are the only planets in the solar system that have no known moons. Jupiter has 79 known moons orbiting it, the largest of which is Ganymede, and it's bigger than Mercury. It was thought that the Milky Way is a belt before, but now we know it's a spiral galaxy. Footprints on the moon can't disappear, because there's no wind to blow them off the surface. There's a theoretical possibility of a white hole, the reverse of a black hole. Nothing can enter it from outside, but light and matter can escape from within it. Triton, a Neptune's moon, orbits the planet in a backwards motion. It's the only moon that does so, and nobody knows why. Although there are trillions of stars in space, we can only see a tiny fraction of them in the sky. Charon, Pluto's moon, is half the size of its planet, which is why Pluto orbits a bit around a spot outside its own axis. All the objects in space, including planets, interstellar dust, and whole galaxies, comprise just about 4% of the universe. The rest is dark matter and dark energy that can't be seen and isn't fully understood. You won't be able to wear a hat on Venus, ever, and just try to stand on your feet. The planet is insanely windy. Its upper winds blow 50 times faster than the planet rotates. What's more, these fierce winds never stop and can get even stronger with time. Want to get away? You'll have to travel 11 billion miles away from Earth before ever leaving the solar system. Take your Google Maps with you. You probably heard of methane gas, a byproduct of natural processes such as volcanic activity and cows. Anyway, this gas is not only a part of the Martian atmosphere, but also the thing that confuses astronomers to no end. The thing is that the volume of methane on Mars keeps wavering and scientists just can't figure out where it might be coming from. Can there be cows on Mars? As you may remember, Pluto used to be a planet but was stripped of this title in 2006. Later, it was reclassified as a dwarf planet. Gee, make up your mind! But the most unexpected fact about this celestial body is that its diameter is smaller than that of the US. See for yourself! The greatest distance across the country, from Maine to Northern California, is about 2,800 miles. As for Pluto, it's only 1,473 miles across. In fact, if you laid Pluto right down in the middle of the United States, you'd crush the heck out of Iowa, Kansas, and Nebraska. Bad idea. The planet Uranus, or Uranus, you can't win either way, rotates on its side and astronomers have no idea why the planet has chosen such an unusual position. The culprits could be ancient mega-powerful collisions, but so far it's just a theory. By the way, this is the only planet laying on its side. Our Sun is insanely massive. Want some proof? Well, 99.86% of all the mass in the solar system is in the mass of the Sun. In particular, the hydrogen and helium it's made of. The remaining 0.14% is mostly the mass of the solar system's eight planets. Outer space isn't a perfect vacuum. It contains not only stars and planets, but also clouds of interstellar dust, space plasma, and cosmic rays. Those are atom fragments dashing from the outskirts of the solar system. One phenomenon people should be worried about while exploring space is cold welding. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get permanently stuck together. It doesn't happen on Earth, since water and air keep pieces separate. Astronauts on board the International Space Station don't use their feet to walk, they float around. So in orbit, the skin on their feet becomes very soft and starts to peel off. That's why they have to take their socks off very carefully. Otherwise, skin cells will break free and float around in the almost weightless environment. Earthquakes on the moon, or more correctly, moonquakes, aren't something from science fiction. They don't occur as often as on our planet. And when they do, it happens closer to the center of the satellite. Scientists think moonquakes might be caused by the gravity of Earth and the Sun. One of the moons of Saturn, Rhea, might have a ring system consisting of three narrow bands. 
if astronomers manage to confirm it, it'll be the first time people discovered rings around a moon. Hey, that's nothing. I've had rings around my collar for years. Normal visible matter, for example, planets and stars, makes up just 5% of the universe. The rest consists of invisible dark energy, that's 68%, and dark matter, about 27%. Add it up, and there's 95% of space we know nothing about. In its darkest areas, space is freezing cold, minus 454 degrees Fahrenheit. But try orbiting Earth in the sunlight, and you'll understand how scorching 250 degrees feel. That's one of the reasons astronaut spacesuits are white. This color is the best to reflect the heat from the sun. About 700 million years ago, I wasn't around then, a mysterious event that occurred may have turned Venus into the place it is now. Admittedly, astronomers can't see the surface of the planet directly because it's covered with dense layers of thick clouds. But space missions that have been sent to the hot planet found that Venus is peppered with fire-breathing volcanoes, massive mountains, countless craters, and gigantic lava plains. The temperatures on the planet are so incredibly high that they could melt lead, and the atmospheric pressure is so immense that it would instantly crush any living being reckless enough to set foot on it. If that's not enough, the atmosphere of the planet is filled with noxious clouds of sulfuric acid, which smells worse than rotten eggs. Carbon dioxide, the main component of Venus's atmosphere, along with the infamous sulfuric acid, creates a powerful greenhouse effect. As a result, the lower atmosphere and the surface of the planet are some of the hottest places in the whole solar system. But the newest scientific theory claims that Venus could have had a pleasant, stable climate for billions of years before something went wrong. Astronomers did thorough research and built a model of a virtualized Venus-like world. This model demonstrated that for most of its history, the hot planet had oceans with liquid water, adequate temperatures, and stable tectonic plates. In fact, the planet resembled Earth as it used to be at the beginning of its life. Scientists suppose that this period of Earth-like development could have lasted for more than 3 billion years. So, during that time, the planet was most likely covered with oceans, which were from 30 to 1,000 feet deep. Also, some water was locked in the soil of the planet. On top of that, Venus had stable temperatures of 68 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit, which, you have to admit it, were quite pleasant and not that different from the temperatures on Earth nowadays. So, what I'm getting at is that for 3 billion years, right until something irrevocable happened 700 million years ago, Venus could have been habitable.